Guys, we've got a package. It should be at the door. It told me it was delivered. So, uh, yeah, that's delivered. Let's open it up and take a look at it. I've been waiting for this here for a couple days, so. Uh-oh. Keep frozen. Whatever could it be. All right, guys, so uh, makeshift. Nope. Where is it? Makeshift. Let's open this sucker up. We are looking at LRS Foods. Careful, dry ice burns, wear gloves. Dry ice is extremely, extremely cold. I don't know what the temperature is. I'll find out and let you know. But super, super cold. It will burn you if you touch it longer than a few seconds. So be very careful. Uh, we ship dry ice with our frozen food. So I'm very accustomed to this, but let's open this up. Good morning, everyone. Luke with Premium Aquatics here. Uh, we've got a few things to go over. One is the Larry's Reef Service LRS food that I just got. Uh, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I am a frozen food person. I love doing that a lot more. Usually it's a lot meatier. I like doing frozen so I can be a little bit more precise with it. And I actually have, forgot it, hold on. Hold on. I bought uh, one of these. I bought one of these uh, from the grocery store, and it's like one of those uh, mustard or ketchup dispensers. Uh, but what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to, you know, for the week, like on a Monday, um, I'll take a little chunk of the frozen food, I'll put it in here, fill it up with water, and then just leave it in the fridge for the next few days. And then I'll do that every few days. That way, instead of having to break off a chunk every single day, thaw it feed it, yada, yada, yada. I'll have this ready to go. I'll just grab it out of the fridge and I'll write dates or whatever on this little sticker and whatnot. And I'll just come in here and spot feed what I want. Obviously, I only have two clowns, so don't have a lot going. I can't really, I, there's no need for me to just broadcast crazy because it's just gonna be wasted and, and uh, really inefficient at getting them fed. One other thing I did get though, uh, and I don't know if I told you guys, but uh, I have an anemone. Uh, we have a really cool, cool looking anemone. Uh, unfortunately, he's moved like 8 million times already since I got him. But my buddy Duffy set me up with the, one of his beautiful anemones with the green base and red uh, tips on it. So I'm really happy to have him in here. But starting over here, he uh, got attached to an MP10, which is unfortunate. Thankfully, I had the guards on there. So he ended up not being damaged at all. He, he was sunken in attached to the foam and so I was able to carefully peel him off and then I had a little um, plastic cage to put him back in where he opened back up. Over the next few days came back to life and was perfectly healthy again. So um, at that point after a few days I thought well I'll just leave the box in there see if he crawls out on his own. I'll put it next to a rock and hopefully he just does it. Didn't do it so finally I took him back out held my hand over the rock that I was going to put him on let them go and obviously as we know anemones do whatever they want unfortunately they've got a mind of their own they don't care where you put them they're going to do what they want so uh, uh within a day he moved back down behind the rock uh which was fine he was still inside a little bit um the clownfish actually loves him the one clownfish the female i'm pretty sure is going to be a female uh hosts in him already he ho she hosted immediately from the bucket into the tank so that's awesome but uh so he moved again and he stayed there for a few days and then this morning i woke up didn't even check it went you know did my stuff and then looked at it and lo and behold he wasn't there immediately my mind races okay mp 10s which one of you got them no nope, they didn't have him i thought okay my overflow took him look back there not back there finally found him underneath this rock over here hiding away so really annoying but that's just the way it goes so hopefully one of these times he'll find his spot and find his home that he loves and he'll stay to it so uh, we'll see what happens but uh, I'm really happy with it I'm actually super excited the uh, clownfish that I got which were not the clownfish that were in the video I'll show you here in a little bit I'll put on my little flap so I can actually get into the water with the camera and get you a close-up of them but I went with a pair of lightning maroon clownfish 
I know, they do bite, they are mean, and I'm not sure if the female is already planning my demise or if she's just really hungry every time I come up to the tank, uh, but she comes up to me like a dog comes up to you when you come home after a long day's work, they're just wagging their tail and they're all over you. Like, that's what I feel like the clownfish is, but I'm not sure if it's because she wants to eat me and kill me and make sure I don't get anywhere near that anemone, or if she's actually happy to see me and wants me to feed her. So, uh, really cool though. It's really interesting to see. But today, so far, the one hosts the anemone and the other sticks to the very far side of the tank and will actually sleep back by the overflow. And they'll come up to each other a little bit, but for the most part, they keep their distance. Today though, they've been doing their little dance. They've been going up, they've been putting their you know back tail end towards each other and just kind of sizing each other up. They're gonna be figuring out which one's female, which one's male, which I'm pretty sure, unless the little one does something just drastic, most likely he's gonna turn out to be the male and this bigger one will be the female that's been hosting the anemone since day one anyway. So, uh, but it's really cool to see them get up to each other without you know any bickering or anything like that, just sizing each other up, doing their little dealio that they do, their little dance and figuring things out. And then hopefully over the next week or so, that male will start hanging out closer to her and they'll do their thing and, and become a pair, an actual mated pair. Um, Long term, I'd love to see eggs. Never gotten eggs out of clownfish. I've never been able to get to that point, but I'm really hoping, I think that is one of the coolest things out there is if you can get your fish to lay eggs or uh, like bang guys to have them breed, um, you know, the, the have their little guys. I think that's just phenomenal. It's incredible to see that actually happening in our system. So I'm hoping for that, but obviously that's gonna be a long time down the road probably, but it's exciting to see progression. And that's what I love to see. We still have some algae issues going on in the system. It's getting a little better, so it's getting there. I've got all my algae down in the refugium. The light from AI is all set up and it's on the reverse cycle, so it comes on around eight or something like that and turns off somewhere in the morning. I forget what time right now, but it's on my phone. But that's set up. The hog algae scrubber is going. Um, I've got the LED on a timer. Uh, actually went out and bought a Bluetooth timer. It's a little outlet that goes into a wall outlet or surge protector, whatever you want to put it into, and then you can actually do it to your phone, run it, and decide what schedule or a timer, whatever you want to do with it. So I've got that, so that LED is now on a timer. I turned off the air pump right now just because it's a little bit loud here when I'm doing recording. But uh, So that's going, so that'll help also kill out any other algae. So I'm not too concerned about it. Um, yesterday, I did a water change, uh, like five or six gallons, something like that, so nothing huge, but this isn't a really large system anyways, but I did that. Everything else is actually running very, very smoothly. And uh, it's technically overall, minus a few algaes, it's looking really great. I actually really love it. Um, I'm very happy with it. But let's go on and get to LRS. Let's take a look at the foods he sent me. Let's go. Let me go grab it. Let's go over some of this. This is the Reef Frenzy Nano. It is a four ounce flat pack. It's formulated for smaller fish, so this is gonna be a little bit more uh, ground up than what the normal Reef Frenzy would be. So we have that. We have the standard Reef Frenzy eight ounce flat pack, all around great food, fish, corals, inverts. This will do it all. Um, this is what I'll probably be using a lot of because it is good for corals as well. So that'll be nice. We then have the herbivore frenzy, which is gonna be great for your herbivores, your tangs, those sort of things that are more into seaweeds. The fish frenzy, which is great for any fish, premium seafood, obviously with all their products. So uh, we've got this, I'll use this a lot as well for the clowns. And then lastly of what I got is the Chunky. It's gonna be definitely for uh, bigger fish, carnivores that are gonna like that more meatier food blend. And even the anemone would probably do really well with this or bigger uh, corals that take nice meaty pieces of food. Uh, this would be another good option for you. So we have this. So there's a ton of different facilities that are utilizing LRS Fertility Frenzy in their breeding program to help uh, with their fry and really um, getting some great results from them. So that's really cool that they've been able to be a part of these uh, aquaculture facilities and really help bring in tank raised fish. But you can see this all on their website, but uh, you know, the uh, Rogers William University, University of Florida, um, 
the Oceanic Institute of Hawaii is doing yellow tangs. Long Island Aquarium is doing the lightning maroons. You know, LRS, known for premium seafood. They get fresh caught. They bring it in. Their fish eggs especially, uh, they bring in the whole fish. So they can harvest the egg sacs themselves. They know the quality that's going into it. They bring the entire fish in. They harvest the egg sacs out of it. And they seal it and freeze it in those eggs to preserve as much of those nutrients as possible with those eggs. And give as much benefit to your fish as possible. Because there are natural juices there that the fish are used to um, or maybe accustomed to so they're attracted to it a lot more than what if you just go get something maybe out of the grocery store or, or something else so uh, really nice uh, they use premium fresh caught they get it there they package it up chew it up uh, and then they package it and freeze it all right so um, I fed the fish they liked it I love these guys they are freaking gorgeous I can't wait uh, well actually I wish I wish they would stay small I, I don't want uh, hopefully when they get larger they'll be tamed enough to me that I won't get chewed apart um, I'm not holding my breath on that but that's what I'm hoping for but they're gorgeous I absolutely love them I'm really glad that I went with them so um, you know with LRS it's great food I'm excited to be able to test this out uh, I'll test each of them out obviously the herbivores I don't have any herbivores so I you know I'll feed it to them still see what they think but I don't have any tanks to really go hog wild on that but uh, with the probiotics one thing to keep in mind with this is because they do use the probiotics um, you might think well why in the world are you putting that stuff into my fish food well I mean it's the same way as to why uh, we put probiotics into some of the um, uh, yogurts that are out there uh, you know it adds live cultures it helps um, create those cultures in your stomach and your intestine and the same thing goes with fish uh, those probiotics and those live cultures are going to get in there and help boost their immune system and hopes for uh, you know overall better health uh, their better immune system especially for when you're first acclimating them you know if you can boost that immune system to help you know maybe lessen that stress and all that uh, all that that is happening when they first come in you know the better off that we are so probiotics can be really a great benefit to our fish so uh, it's really cool that they add this in all their foods um, really quality product uh, shout out to LRS for for creating this if you don't know his story Larry's story you know go check up on it it's really cool um, but we are very happy to be able to provide them to you guys uh, local all across the uh, country we can definitely ship to you like I said go check it out we ship with dry ice Mondays and Tuesdays of every week so we'd be happy to get you some if you can't find it locally to you so uh, go check that out I'll put links in the description below as always thanks for tuning in we really appreciate you stopping by uh, I know Ella really loved doing the video last week and she was happy to see some comments or while well, she's gonna be happy she hasn't seen him yet but she's gonna see him um, and I'll let her do a little bit here uh, to let you know what the cat's name was so uh, you know we haven't named these uh, two fish yet she'll ask you for some uh, names on uh, what we should name them but uh, thanks for stopping by make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already you know the deal uh, hit that bell for notifications so you can stay the most up to date on this system as well as our other videos and we will catch you next week peace Hi guys, welcome back, Premium Qualic Squad. It's Ella. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to Robert for saying the cat's name is Doll. To Steven for thinking she should get her own channel because I've wanted a channel. And a uh, shout out to Yuri for thinking Celeste, Celeste, maybe? I don't know. Celeste. Peace out, uh, Premium Aquatic Squad. Love you. Bye.